welcome back to Cityscape. In this episode of Secret People, we will cover Eric Prince, a former Navy SEAL and founder of a company known as Blackwater. For most of history, wars have been limited to private mercenaries fighting on behalf of kings and warlords. The idea of total war, introduced in World War I and II, are relatively new concepts. Total war is where the state enlists its people into an all-or-nothing battle that results in either supremacy or annihilation. This model of warfare is incredibly destructive to say the least, and this is why the idea of private militaries engaged in limited conflicts is regaining popularity. What happens, however, when a private military becomes too wealthy, too powerful, and begins to exercise influence over governments? This is exactly the story of Eric Prince, a man yielding political and military influence across several continents throughout the world. As always, let's start with a brief background. Eric Prince was born on June 6, 1969 in Holland, Michigan. He is the son of Edgar Prince, an American engineer and businessman who founded the Prince Corporation. Prince is the youngest of four siblings. His sister, by the way, Elizabeth DeVos, is the former U.S. Secretary of Education. Anyway, while growing up, Prince and his father toured the world together, visiting the Dachau concentration camp in Germany, divided Berlin, and the battlefields of Normandy. These trips made an enormous impression on young Prince, at the age of 18, Prince joined the Naval Academy, but left after just three semesters. He went on to remark, I love the Navy, but not the Academy. He went on to receive a bachelor's degree in economics at Hillsdale College. After graduating, Prince was commissioned as an officer in the U.S. Navy via Officer Candidate School in 1992. He went on to become a Navy SEAL and deployed for two years with SEAL Team 8 to Haiti the Middle East, and the Balkans. According to his autobiography, it was during his tour in the Yugoslavia war that he realized there was a need for a private military. Prince also remarks that the Rwanda genocide in 1994 was another reason why he founded Blackwater. He prematurely left the Navy as a SEAL operator to start his own enterprise. Prince moved to Virginia Beach in 1997 and personally financed the formation of Blackwater worldwide. He bought 6,000 acres of the Great Dismal Swamp in North Carolina and set up a school for operations. Blackwater's main service is to guard U.S. officials and government facilities overseas. From 1997 to 2010, Blackwater was awarded $2 billion in government security contracts, about $1.6 billion of which were unclassified federal work, and the rest being classified. The CIA also awarded them with $600 million in classified contracts. Blackwater quickly became the State Department's biggest security company, providing 987 guards for embassies and bases around the world. As we all know, however, security is dangerous business, and disasters would inevitably pop up. The first incident came in 2004, when insurgents ambushed Blackwater contractors in the Iraqi city of Fallujah. The insurgents then strung up the charred bodies for the public to see. Later, in September 2007, the company came under heavy criticism after the Niso Square massacre, in which Blackwater employees opened fire in a crowded square in Baghdad, killing 17 Iraqi civilians and seriously wounding 20 more. The Blackwater employees apparently fired at the crowd with no provocations. This appeared like deliberate murder. Three guards were convicted of 14 manslaughter charges and another of murder. Donald Trump later pardoned all four of these contractors on December 2020, however. There was more dirty laundry boiling up, however. Arms trafficking. In 2012, the company paid a combined fee of $49 million to settle charges of arms trafficking violation related to the selling of crop duster planes that were converted into military aircraft. Prince had also helped the Crown Prince of Abu Dhabi establish a private mercenary army months before the Arab Spring. Aside from assaults on civilians and weapons trafficking, 
political espionage became another issue. Prince is a big supporter of Donald Trump. He contributed a quarter million dollars to Trump's presidential campaign and another hundred thousand dollars to Make America Number One, a right-wing political committee. In recent years, Prince has recruited former intelligence agents to infiltrate Democratic congressional campaigns, labor organizations, and other groups considered, quote, hostile to the Trump agenda. This was in support of James O'Keefe's Project Veritas. For those of you who don't know, Project Veritas is an American far-right activist group who produce undercover videos and secret recordings to expose the mainstream media. Joe Biden winning by voter fraud is one of the many conspiracies propagated by this project. According to the New York Times, Prince also arranged meetings between members of the Trump campaign and the Saudis, as well as the Russians, to help the then presidential candidate win the election. After Trump came into power, Prince aggressively began lobbying to privatize the entire conflict in Afghanistan, claiming that it would be far cheaper than using military troops and much less damaging in terms of casualty. Prince's efforts have raised eyebrows in Washington, however, where critics note that his current company, the Hong Kong-based Frontier Services Group, could profit enormously if the Trump administration were to hand over the war effort in Afghanistan to contractors. The fact that a man who has literally made billions of dollars doing paramilitary work for the federal government and CIA was arranging political meeting with the Saudis and Russians and spying on members of the Democratic Party was simply too much for the public. This combination made Prince become the face of everything that's wrong with war profiteering. After several investigations for arms trafficking, including one from the FBI, Prince withdrew from public appearance. He resigned as CEO of his company and now lives between Middleburg, Virginia and Abu Dhabi, UAE. He is currently married to Stacey DeLuke and has a total of seven children. Prince's private military, Blackwater, has been renamed to Academy. That company went defunct, however, and has merged with Constellus Group. Prince now runs Frontier Services, a Chinese Africa-focused security company. Many people wonder if Prince represents a new era of modern warlords, or if he is just an entrepreneur capitalizing on a defense industry. Only time will tell, I suppose. As for my take on a subject, war is a commodity that can be purchased like anything else, unfortunately. As long as there are people willing to fight and kill for money, this market will exist, whether private or government. Compared to the extreme damage government militaries have done, I find it a bit hypocritical to criticize Prince. Yes, he may be guilty of political espionage, arms trafficking, etc. But when considering the all-out nuclear holocaust that awaits if governments do decide to go at it, this may be a small price to pay. I guess this is my way of saying that as flawed as private militaries are, I still prefer dumb over state conflict. See you next time.